What? It's a game. It is a game. And, and it's not just a game. It's a, it's a game with Ratchet and Clunk. All right. So where did we leave off? Uh. uh we did some puzzles with Clank. Yes. So we're in a different sector of the world right now. Yeah. The and world. this means that the next big planet is that one, I believe. Scraps? Yes. Yeah, you uh, you you kind of crashed. I did. Yeah. On Discord? Like you, yeah, well, I mean, you left the call. I... Oh, okay, wow. Let me just fix that real quick. Do you want to start over, or...? Alright, we're back. Okay, we're back. Cool. Yeah. I was wondering why you went silent all of a sudden. You're usually much more talkative. No, no, that's because... No, no. Uh, so, uh, how's your week been? It's been fine. It's, it's been a week. Well, it'd be weird if it wasn't a week. Alright, so we're fighting off a, a, a satellite to clear space out, but, um... Nice. So, where did we leave off? Do you remember uh, it all? Don't. No, you don't remember it all? No. Uh, oh, last thing we saw was, uh, Ratchet... No. Clank contact... Ratchet contacted Clank. And, and got, what it, did Clank request? That y'all go back in time to save the... Uh, to save his dad. Homunculus. Dad. Yes. Played by Charles yes. Martinet. Yes, yes. Um... Yeah. So, uh... A lot of stuff's happened in the last week. Uh, in Hollywood, and I would love to talk about it. Ah, uh, yes, the uh, the Actors Guild. Yeah, so the Screen Actors Guild's negotiations uh, they fell through, uh, which means the Screen Actors have now uh, joined the Writers Guild uh, in their strikes. Uh, this included the cast of Oppenheimer leaving the premiere. Le leaving the premiere in the UK of the Oppenheimer film. Um, anywho, uh, the, a bunch of Hollywood executives gathered in a meeting. Uh, we have a list of who they were. Uh, and they were like various heads of various, uh, companies, you know, like Disney and, uh, Oh, Warner Bros. it turns and... out I actually have what I need. Never mind. Oh, nice. Yeah. I know. It was, uh... They had stated that... Or one of the people there, one of the executives stated that their plan to deal with the strike is to just wait until the people protesting uh, run out of money and go homeless before resuming negotiations, which is disgusting. Do you want to just hang out in space while you tell this story? We'll do that. No, no, you can't. Uh, anywho. I uh, don't want to interrupt with story. They're, they're, they're trying to quickly walk back and not sound as monstrous as they are. Uh, so. Oh, no. They were hoping we'd feel bad for them having to wait people out and expect people to go homeless for them. Who, who, why don't we think of the uh, the poor billionaires? Uh, now, we don't know which executive said it, but my money's on Zaslov. Yeah, I'd probably put my money there, too. Yeah. That's the guy who uh, really insisted on uh, the future of the studio being the Flash. <laughs> Yeah, he's the guy that uh, that basically erased thousands of uh, content uh, off of uh, like off their archives, removed them, basically 
tried scrubbing it from the internet, including things that were done and just not released yet, all to try and save about $3 million in uh, taxes, uh, which costed about, what was it, like $30 billion in stock? Apparently, yeah. Yeah, he, he, he's not exactly the smartest person or the uh, most moral. Uh, what we can say is he's not winning any uh, business awards at the moment. I don't know. He, he might win the uh, Business Darwin Award. You know, I he mean, might be right up there with Osborne. True. The the Green Goblin? No. The computer company. Have you oh. ever heard of Osborne? Oh, I, I thought you were talking about Norman Osborne, and I was like... No. <laughs> I mean, to All be right, fair, so... turning yourself into a uh, monstrous uh, half-human goblin thing... Um... Would probably be an improvement. I, I mean, business-wise, it, it sounds like suicide, but actually, it probably did him a lot of good. Imagine you being able to go into town and say, yeah, I'm the corporation that turns people into the Green Goblin. I mean, that's what the plan was for uh, the Amazing Spider-Man series, Oscorp just becoming, uh, creating super-powered mercenaries for hire, but then it never got the third film. Well, it never was going to get a third Spider-Man film. Apparently, uh, Sony had no interest in actually making a third Spider-Man. They wanted to immediately go into the Sinister Six. Oh, mm. by the way, do you know who they wanted to play, um... Doc Ock? Alfred Molina? No. That would have been a good choice. Of course it would have been a good choice. Alfred Molina is the best Doc Ock, unless think, we're counting Liv. Think 2016 top top actors of all time. Ben Affleck? No. Nope. I have no idea. Denzel Washington. I think he could be a decent Doc Ock. I mean, it's not a bad choice, to be honest. But uh, I highly doubt he would have said yes. <laughs> Yeah. I like Denzel Washington. You know what my favorite Denzel Washington film is? Uh, what is it? Uh, it's Inside Man. Oh, okay. It's also got, on the topic of, uh, Spider-Man, it's got Willem Dafoe in it as well. Oh yeah, it has the Green Goblin. Yep. Um, I can talk to this guy. Oh, nice. I was wondering if you'd be interested in helping out a local businessman. My corporate competitor has been hauling out hollow balls all over the sector, and it's ruining my business. If just a few of them were to, um, say, disappear, I'd be willing to pay for it. Isn't this exciting? I get to to be part of corporate espionage. <laughs> you know what my favorite episodes of Bones is? Oh, upgrade. Oh, nice. Kinetic demolishers. Thank God. Based on the topic of corporate now, espionage, what do you think my favorite episode of Bones is? I've never seen a single them. episode of Bones. Ah, uh, it's a chocolate episode. So, in Bones, uh, there's a chocolate episode, and the way it starts is uh, a chocolate company is unveiling the new uh, world's largest uh, chocolate bar, uh, and using it as a publicity stunt to showcase their new chocolate recipe, which is supposed to be the best chocolate in the world. However, when they're cutting it, uh, it's not just filled with caramel, it's also filled with a human corpse. Oh. Yep. Was it a real uh, corpse? Well, I mean, that's who the victim is in the show. 
Fair enough. It could have just been a cartoon corpse, like like one of the little skeletons they have like in a lab. Nah. Uh, so what it turned out is that the corpse belonged to this uh, to an employee who uh, turned out to be a corporate spy for hire. She would be paid by companies to uh, to get a job at. Uh, rival companies and steal all their trade secrets uh, and the person who did it was the chocolatier who had created the recipe for the best chocolate in the world um, because she had started dating him for the chocolate recipe because you know that's what she was paid to do mm. and when he found out uh, he drowned her in the chocolate and then didn't think to scoop the body out well, he couldn't. Fair enough. Uh, uh, he would have gotten away with it if it weren't for the fact that uh, he, her her final breath was captured in the chocolate. There was an air bubble in the chocolate and something... And, and that was how they were able to pinpoint the, the date that... Or the time she died. Mm. And who was in... Like, who was in the place with her when she died. Okay, we have a serious choice. We can either go to the Argorium Battleplex or we can go to the Tonai Outpost. Uh, I... One of which is story-heavy, the other is not. Uh, let's do the story-heavy one later. Okay. Time to land at the Argorium Battleplex. Hell yeah. This has the best section in the entire video game actually yeah this is this is the best moment of like any ratchet and clank game i want you to get really excited for this you have the feeling you're hyping me up and it's gonna be a huge disappointment no i'm serious this is this is actually really impressive that's not it <laughs> but um but it, it's it's huge. It, it's so impressive. What's your favorite part of um a Banjo Kazooie nuts and bolts? Define favorite. What favorite part sticks with you word. the most? Would you, would you say it's uh, Klungo saves the world? No. Well, too bad. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> My punchline got ruined. <laughs> Skip. So it's, it's Hero Congo saves the world. It's the Captain Quark video game. <laughs> it's called My Blaster Runs Hot. Oh my. Don't do my ad justice. The hotter the blaster, the uh, more damage it does. Ah. But if it reaches it its uh, peak, I have to it go into up. cooldown. Oh, so it's like the uh, the the plasma pistol from Halo. Does that get more damage the hotter it is? I don't know. My brother always said it did. Mm, I don't think so. I don't think that was a mechanic. Oh, uh, I guess my brother lied. There we Whoa. go. And then it reaches its maximum heat. Uh, I get an energy beam. Ah. Uh. I said to baby. I didn't save the mother, but I saved the baby. Wow. What are you, pro-life? I try. How dare you. I didn't save the baby that time. Wow, what are you, pro-life? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, those jokes were dark. I mean, to be fair, they 
It is very difficult to save the citizens. Oh, I got hit. Oh, rip. Oh, you got revived. Yep, so uh, in universe, uh, if we listen to the radio, uh, you'd be hearing advertisements for My Blaster Runs Hot, the new movie by Captain Quark. Oh, boy. And his sidekick, um, Pete the Pirate. Not what I was expecting. Uh, Pete was a side character in the previous game, so they had his voice actor around, so they kept him in the booth to do uh, more recordings and stuff. Hmm. So what's the uh, reward for beating this? Oh, nothing. Oh. I think gamer score, but I'm not too interested in checking. Gamer score. What is this? An Xbox game? No, it's a PlayStation game. So it'd be a trophy. I, Fair point. I know. I was thinking of that. God. Remember back when? And I'm dead. Oh, back... Don't worry, I, don't I got 14 civilians ca saved and 150 evil robots killed. What about good robots? There's no good robots. Wow. So you're just general. What about Clank? Uh, saying Clank's not good? Clank is uh, currently not with us, so I can say this stuff. <laughs> uh, no. Oh, so, so, so you're willing to say it when he's not around? Yeah, this is how I operate. <laughs> uh, there we go. I got the new armor. Nice. Also looks like a biker helmet, to be honest. It looks so dumb. I'd be fine without the helmet. I'm gonna be honest. Even I think even the developers knew because all the cutscenes use the default armor. Makes sense. You know what would have looked good? A scouter. Maybe. Uh, this is why the new games let you uh, mix and match armor pieces and the armor oh, nice. in the helmet uh, comes off during cutscenes. Hell yeah. Back, Chief. Like how whatever gloves you're wearing in uh, God of War come off whenever he uh, gets the Chaos Blades. Yep. Alright, I gotta survive five rounds cutscene. of combat. I believe in you. I'm always a fan of arenas in uh, games. Ratchet and Clank has some of the better ones of like any series. That's why they are like a staple of the franchise. Though I will be having to conserve ammo, so expect me be using the wrench a bit for the uh, for the clearing out of the the uh, micro enemies. Well, that's fine. Retro thing is really good with uh, with loot fountains. Lots of bolts have... left behind after every victory. Yeah, I I'm still pissed that Bethesda locked uh, the loot fountains in Diablo Immortal. Not Bethesda. Behind, er, not no Blizzard. Sorry, I was getting my bees confused. That's fair. You know, the, the three Bs. Bioware, Bethesda, and Blizzard. No, no, no. Yeah. Bioware, Blizzard, and video games. Video games. Yeah, no, I, I still am salty that Blizzard uh, locked the loot fountains in Diablo Immortal behind the paywall. Behind microtransactions. Oh, I'm out of ammo? It... Oh, you could have warned, you could have told me, game. Uh, is that just makes it a loot fount, or that just makes it a loot box with extra steps that could result in you not getting to even open the loot the loot box. Yeah. Even after paying, because you know there's still the chance you could die before getting to the boss. But you see. It's not about the loot. It's about the loot you get from the gamers. 
Uh, I have no good expectations for Diablo 4. I've already heard bad things. It's already out, I believe. Oh, it is? oh the, if it's out and I haven't heard jack shit about it, then that's a really bad sign. Probably. Oh, shoot. Oh, God. Yeah, it, it came out uh, 10 days ago. Oh, that's not good. Probably not. You know, we should play. We should play Elder Scrolls Arena. Never heard of it. It's the first Elder Scrolls game. Oh. I can't. I have so much trouble getting even any of the newer ones. I don't know how you can get into the oldest one. I tried playing Oblivion uh, a few months back, and I the controls are not as crisp as I remember, and you can't remap them. You want to know a fun up. story about Oblivion? What? So my brother, this is like right after we got the Xbox 360, um, gets a copy of Oblivion from a friend, and he gets hooked to it. Like absolutely hooked. Is it the uh, is it the special edition, the one that comes with Shivering Isles? Yes, all the DLC. Fuck yeah! So he, he's playing Isles that and he's having a lot of fun, and then somewhere in the middle of that, the disc just stops working. He clocks oh, in like no. 500 hours in like a, in under a month. It's ridiculous. Anyway. I'm just have to wait for this guy to like throw throw a bomb. There we go. So then what happens? Uh, so Did what ends up happening failed? is he's unhappy that he can't play um, Oblivion anymore. So what he does is he just dumps the entire Xbox what and the all fuck? the games without telling telling me. He just throws it on the trash can. What the fuck? Did you fish it out? No, I didn't even know about it until like several days later. I'm like, hey, Ian, where's the old Xbox? He's like, oh, I threw it out. It stopped working. And I'm like, and all the games? And he's like, I threw all those out too. And I'm like, but we have a 360. Uh, we can still play games. <laughs> And, he, and all he had to do, say about that was, oops. Oh, I think you've told me that before. Yes. I, I think when we were playing Fable. Probably. I probably mentioned it. Yeah, because wasn't Fable one of the games you had for the Xbox? Um, no. Oh. I had a Fable... Two, I believe, for the Xbox 360. Uh, Though Fable maybe I might have told the story because it was the same. F because I got a copy of Fable One for a brief time uh, when a friend let me borrow. And it was the same friend my brother bought the uh, Oblivion from. Okay, Ooh, we need the Rhino cool. Hollow Plan. There we go. The what? The Rhino Hollow Plan. The Rhino is the most important gun in the entire game. Oh, I forgot to look at the Fable 4 trailer. Did the Fable 4 trailer come out? Yes. 
I, I forgot to look at it. That's fair. I don't have uh, high hopes. High expectations for it. High high uh, hopes for it living. It makes sense. sense. Da -da 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 -da. The games that have come out since Fable 2 have, like, been subpar. You know, you got Fable 3, and you got that three, uh, that VR Fable game. That's uh, fair, for the Kinect, right? Oh, yeah, the Kinect, not VR. I don't I don't know. The, Con the Kinect could be a VR system if you squint really hard and imagine yourself doing something fun. God, the Kinect was such a disaster. Yeah, no, the, the Fable Connect game was terrible because of its foundation. It, it, because it required the Connect, it basically had you, you to make any like substantial progress, you, you'd have to sit down and play for hours. And playing motion controls for hours, like extensive motion controls that the Connect requires, since yeah, no, it you know, was a full piece body. of shit. Yeah, it was a piece of shit and needed very wide gestures to work. Hmm. Yeah, no, the... Uh, it, it wasn't good. All right, bros before foes. Partner up with a gladiator of modest intelligence for a series of battles. Could you culminating in an Agorian rite of passage called Mauling by Wargrok. How exciting. Let's do it. Do oh, it. Get cut scene. Hell yeah. I like those lizard dudes. It's what Captain Court got? I didn't take a three-week hero correspondence course to be called Mister. Easy on the goods, pal. I like the lizard dudes. They're awesome. The Argorians have great designs. They do. You said they're the jocks? Yes, they're based off uh, jock stereotypes. Who are the theater kids? The uh, the lizard people with the uh, robot suits. Ooh. We ran into one of them earlier. He gave us the mission for corporate espionage. Oh, right, 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 right. I love the theater. I am know. big into theater, too. Absolutely. I was in a movie once. I've said this before, right? You were in an Adam Sandler film. Uh, an Adam Sandler That's produced film. I was not actually... He never showed up. I um, mean, it was still produced by him, so that still makes it an Adam Sandler film. I will say this, though. Uh, reading uh, information from like other people who have been in film as extras and or uh, lead roles, I can say this. I was very well paid. Yeah, Adam Sandler's, like, a really fucking good dude. <laughs> like, the re uh, uh, his movies are garbage because a lot of them serve the purpose to help his friends out of bad situations. Like, uh, there was that one... Uh, I mean, you could still do it and make a good movie, but... <laughs> well, <laughs> the thing is... Uh, what was it? Tom Cruise's ex-wife? Uh, she was in... Jack and Jill in a very minor role, but that gave her the time and money to uh, have to build the safety nets she needed to safely divorce Tom Cruise. Uh, and because you know the Church of Scientology is does not like that and would have like ruined her if she didn't have the safety nets that uh, Adam Sandler. Um, uh, was able to get her 
you know? I hate fighting the Wargrok. Not because it's hard, but because it's like... Tedious? Not even all that tedious, it's more or less uh, just the fact that it's like... Not, I'm fighting him now, or her, and it's like kind of annoying because I don't have the best guns in the game that I would really want to be fighting with. Uh. So I can't just burn through the war rock like I usually do. I have to go through this methodically. Uh, you have to do it the intended way. It can't be helped. So, because you were an extra in a film once, um, be careful because there are, like, Hollywood is trying to hire uh, scabs. I have not gotten any emails. That was years ago. <laughs> yeah, well, they're desperate. <laughs> oh, look! Look at where where the uh, the shooting points are. Her tits. Extra damage to shoot her in the boob. Ah, oh, right in the tit. Oh, you're getting fucked. Absolutely. Fucker. What do they take as the sign of aggression? Uh, looking them in the eyes. It's a, it's a joke. Yeah. Damn, Cork's terrified of ninjas? Uh, no, he's making reference that war rocks are afraid of ninjas. Oh. I might be able to win this, I might not. I believe in you. You can do it. You can do it. I believe. Long. That's a, uh, there we go, I did Gilmore. it. Happy Gilmore? I've never seen Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore's the golf one, right? Probably. <laughs> I don't think they killed it. It's not dead. Honorable lizard thing. I understand your proud warrior ways. The Nabla tribesmen of Florana once referred to me as or he with mighty pecs who had delivered us serenity. But we cannot kill this creature. You must kill the war drug or die. War this thing trying to eat. <laughs> <laughs> this Lombax is young. He does not understand that being a hero is 45% strength, 60% bravery, and 10% raw intelligence. That's 115%! You're welcome. Nerd. Please, take me instead. All that I ask is that you name something impressive in my honor. Perhaps a school or a food court. What the fuck? Who's a good war rock? You are. Yes, you are. I'm gonna name you Snowball. You've gotta be kidding me. I ho Snowball away! Quirk is the bard who pumps every stat into charisma and then just wins entirely by luck. That's valid. <laughs> Hell yeah. This is what I'm really here for, the negotiator. To whom it may concern. This is one of the best guns in the game. I would assume so. It looks like a very good crowd control. Man, I would kill for some mac and cheese right now. Maybe you could find a use for it. There was like a year where Check I out this gun. Boom. Hell yeah. It's huge. I love the the fact that Ratchet's so small. Because it makes all the guns he has even bigger. 
Yeah. All right, best gun in the, second best gun in the game. What is this? Oh, it's a disco ball. Oh, it's the peanut stamps. I love it. It goes great with the uh, the the negotiator. I would assume so. They used it as the example of what pairs well with it. Yep. Let me see. Let me check this real quick. Yep, Silver Cup is in. You want to do Silver Cup? Hell yeah. Yeah, I can do this. 60 seconds to beat the crap out of 60 enemies? Can do. Hell yeah. Does the electric pin hurt you as well? No, it does not. Okay. The problem is that as, at its current level, which is quite low, it's uh, not able to deal near, it doesn't last long. Uh, which is the benefit you get from leveling it up, which is lasts longer. I mean, that could be useful. I mean, yeah, which is why I want it, to level up. They it's also one of the them. slowest leveling up weapons in the entire game. <laughs> uh, uh, and it works like... Uh, is the more you use it, the more they level up in particular? Yep. Okay. They gain experience for every bit of damage they deal. Oh, nice. Yeah, there's probably some grinding spot for leveling it up. Uh, the game's pretty good at not having, like, obvious grinding spots. Um... The most obvious one is like a area in like the late game, but that helps. I mean, late game areas typically are the best grinding spots in general. I'm supposed to I shoot these out of the air, I forgot about that. Actually, in Dark Souls, we're going to be unlocking the best grinding spot. Uh, or actually, I guess we will have already unlocked the best grinding spot in Dark Souls by the time this goes up on the YouTube channel. Oh, probably, yeah. It's, uh, Anorlando. So the trick uh, here is you're supposed to, uh, manage, um, their numbers and the amount of cluster bombs they throw at you. I see. Yeah, Anorlando has, uh, six, um statues that you can kill that are slow and clunky and very easy to kill mm -hmm. and each one gives you 1500 souls so each time you sit down that's a good 9k And I did not win. Ah, uh, Rippy and Pippy. Maybe next time. Ah, oh, well. You can't win them all. Yeah, we got story missions to do. If there's anything Pleasantville taught me, it's that you can't win them all. I still need you to see Pleasantville. The... You do. It's got Tobey Maguire. It Is was, this uh, before or after Spider-Man? Before. Hmm. Yeah, this is what he was known for when he was cast for Spider-Man. Oh, by the way, I love this detail. They take your ship away and they put it in, like, here, and they bring it back out. Oh, that's cool. You see that in the distance right there? Yeah, the claw. Yep. That's such yeah. a cool detail. Yeah. I like attention to detail. Yep. The Ratchet and Clank series is like full of it. Yeah. Speaking of attention to detail, I found a uh, YouTube channel that uh, like breaks down the detail, like the ge geography details of video games, and I've uh, I've seen their episodes on uh, Dark Souls one, two, and three. And one thing that I learned about Dark Souls three is that. 
you know how in the the Farron Woods, um, you gotta extinguish the three flames that represent the uh, the three Lord Souls. Yes. Did you know there was originally supposed to be a fourth flame for Thief? The dog. No, Thief, not Sith. Oh, Thief the Scaleless. Okay. Yes. Uh, there was originally supposed to be a, a fourth flame. Uh, the texture for Seath's uh, tapestry is still in the game files, and if you uh, glitch into a specific spot, you can activate the cutscene of extinguishing the fourth flame. Mm. Uh, but it, it was never implemented for reasons. However, there is one section in the Undead Settlement where you can like if you get the angle just right you can see where the fourth tower would have been all right so this is the tom the outpost on xanafar xanafar this is where this is where uh nefarious you're gonna crash go back landed. in time yes yep i'm gonna go back in time da -da -da. Da -da -da. This, this is the favorite level of mine it's Ooh. it's a smaller planet than most of the others, but like, it is full of little attention to details that just ooze personality, you know. I love snow levels. Very much so. Ratchet and Clank has some of the best ones in video games. If I made a 3D platformer, I would definitely make the second level be a snow level. God. You want to know one of the most wild things uh, on the topic of planets? You want to know what the most wild thing I think about No Man's Sky's production is? Uh, what is it? You know how uh, in the lead up to No Man's Sky's release, they uh, they said that the day-night cycle for each planet is actually mapped to their orbit, tilt, and uh, uh, yes. and spin, uh, and how it wasn't the case in the in the final release. I am aware of this. It caused too much uh, trouble with figuring out where you were at any given time. Uh, sort of. What happened is the playtesters would find that when they left the planet and came back, they wouldn't. They thought that it was glitch because they kept landing in different spots. Because, you know, once you leave the planet, it continues spinning. So when they come back, uh, like, it, it, it's in a different spot. It's got a different spin. Uh, this or, place like, I thought I was before, it's, it's changed. Yeah. The Clearly, the game I, is I bugged. Yeah, dang it. <laughs> God. Yeah. All right. Just gonna get out the Groovatron just in case. Yeah. I love these little sloth things. What happened here? Doctor Nefarious. He tricked us into helping him build this outpost, and before we knew it, his troops. These are the theater kids. No, no, no. These are the. Uh, the, these aren't based off any of the uh, high school stereotypes. Attention. It's the okay. lizard people who look like they're part robot. Ah, uh. oh, shoot. I, I threw that down too early. Oh, nice. A break dancing. Now break them. So. There we go. Finally. Level three. Hell yeah. Dang it. I missed that jump. Ah, uh, rip. Hell yeah. And that leveled up too. I'm assuming that either gives it a wider area of effect or makes it last longer. Last longer, primarily. Yeah, okay. So, I encountered some Jehovah's Witnesses uh, yesterday at work. Ah. How did that go? I... <clears throat> well, so... What I do for work is I, um,
Uh, I scoop up dog shit for a living. It pays really well. Of course, it's one of those jobs nobody wants to do. Same with yeah. Pie. Yeah, dirty jobs tend to pay well. Um, oh, level three already? On the Groovatron, yep. Wow. The Groovatron fast. levels up fast. It levels up based on the weapon damage of other weapons you do and the short time uh, it's active. Oh man, that's nice. So I was getting the bucket out of the back of the truck, you know, getting everything prepared to go in a yard when uh, these uh, old men that are that were like. It, it was clear they were, uh, it was clear they were dressed to, uh, uh, okay, oh, seriously. Shit. to go door to door and be like, hey, have you heard of Jesus Christ, you know? Have you heard of our Lord uh, and so, Savior, Pinocchio? So, they came up to me, looked at my truck, and was like, you know, I bet your, your work is really hard, you're really hard working, but you know what will be harder? Yeah, uh, it'll be harder. Everything will be harder if, when the end comes and you haven't accepted Jesus. So, uh, uh, something, something, hell on earth, something, something. You need to be saved. Blah blah blah. And they're like, "Would you like some reading material?" And showed me a Jehovah's Witness pamphlet, like, and. Because I was in my work uniform, I had to be polite. I was like, no thanks. Uh, and then I went to the yard and did my job. When I was coming back to my truck, uh, they approached me again. Uh, and they're like, are you sure? The, the end is coming soon and blah, 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 blah. And at that point, I was like, uh, my response was, I was trying to be polite earlier. I am an apostate. Uh, and they immediately left me alone because, you know, if a Jehovah's Witness is caught knowingly interacting with an apostate, uh, they can get disfellowshipped. Uh, what's an apostate? An apostate is someone that is beyond saving. Mm. Uh, everyone who's been disfellowshipped is considered an apostate. Uh, and... Uh, it's also not a lie. As an as a trans atheist witch, I am an apostate. <laughs> All right, I have a puzzle here. I got this thing. I need water to uh, to use, but I use don't a have snowball. a source of water. No, but what about that water right there? That's yeah, I was down. fucking with you. <laughs> Well, the way you were talking, I would figure, like, oh, maybe a snowball? Yeah, you, you'd think. Um, they do, this is a PS3 game, so they don't got the physics for that. They had physics for snowballs in the PS3? Um, <laughs> I can't argue with that. But what I meant was, they don't... Is that, um... They would. They had to keep it simple, so they don't have any like ridiculous like snow physics going on here. These are all textures. You don't, you don't need snow physics. Just when you're on an area, a ground that's marked as snow, just be like, oh, the the gun can, uh, the gun can scoop up and just have like a white texture come from the ground into the gun to launch a snowball or to get the snow in it. Probably. It wouldn't be hard. So what is that orange juice that you're shooting? It's uh, honey. The sweetest substance in the world that these guys from the previous episode love. I see. They will eat me if they if I did not have this. If that makes sense. It makes sense. Shoot, shoot, shoot. There we go. Uh, you almost died. How am I going to get over there? I need to get over there. Wait, why do you need to get over there? 
you can see a hollow plan right over there, which I want. Uh, what is it? It's the hollow plan for the rhino. Oh, and how do you get there? Hey, look at that. It's, um... You get it by collecting stuff. Let me see. Maybe it's around here. Might be on the way maybe, back around. Maybe the real rhino or the friends we made along the way. No. The real rhino is the gun that plays uh, fancy music while blowing holes into all my enemies. Hell yeah. This is actually good design, I'm gonna be honest. Oh, yeah. It looks like it has very smooth controls. Are those invisible boxes? Yes, semi invisible boxes. Thinking about destroying boxes makes me remember how much I hated Crash 4. Yeah, that game is kind of mean-spirited with the box placement, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Oh man, once uh, the, the head of Activision Blizzard is... Bobby Kotick. Finally, yeah, once Kotick is finally out, we should definitely play the tra the the Crash trilogy. You know, the insane trilogy. Yeah, I know. I get, I get it. I think it'd be fun. I call dibs on warp. I wonder if there's there's got to be mods for Crash Bandicoot warped that gives the uh, jet skis the original controls back. Probably. I would not be surprised. Steam is Steam, and Steam users are addicted to that kind of stuff. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Fuck. Fuck. Why would you what do this? Fuck? That slope was bullshit. Ugh. Don't worry. Alternate timelines and all that. Boom. Oh, I'm just gonna have to fall to my death. I have five out of ten. I'm so close. So the Rhino is basically the most powerful gun in the game. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. It's really weird how like my Tesla spikes keep vanishing. It shouldn't be going that fast. No, it's um. What I mean is like when I throw them and like an enemy model intercepts, uh, the spike vanishes, which is very obnoxious. If that makes sense. Yeah. There we go. Only had to use most of my ammo. And now I have freed the uh, the sloth people, the fungoids. Isn't it funny how their how their sort of god figure is somebody who actively talks about how how they louse everything up? <laughs> Do you remember that? 
They keep going, praise Orvis. But, like, Orvis in, like, a previous episode was like, and they allowed and stop time travel. You there? Yeah, I just don't know what to respond to that. Fair enough. Alright, time for time travel. Well, Nexus does not have any mod packs that would fix the, uh... That would fix the jet skis. Mmm. That sucks. I love this little section. There's no combat. It's just all story, you know? Yeah. A day without Dr. Nefarious is like a day without sunshine. Behold, Fongoids, lo, on this very spot lies the rock which fell from the sky and delivered the Metal One and his butler into our midst. This is proof that the great and almighty Orvis believes we can be trusted with technology once more. Either that, or this is some cosmic coincidence that we'll be kicking ourselves about later. <laughs> Oh, man. I, w I wouldn't say the humor is dry, but it is very... Very ironic. Valid. You know what I've been, uh... You know what I watched over the last week? Uh, tell me. Pirates of the Caribbean. Ah, yes. I watched the three movies. You know, the only three movies to exist. The only three movies to ever exist. Pirates of the Caribbean and uh, Haunted Mansion. Oh, God. Oh, uh, isn't uh, Jamie Lee Curtis going to be in the new Haunted Mansion? I don't know. I, I want to say she's going to be the, uh, the the head in the crystal ball. I'm going to double check. I love Jamie Lee Curtis, though. Nothing we can do. Not for a while. <laughs> we'll just have to wait for them to finish building the oil derrick so we can fix it. Why? God, I Why? love Jamie Lee Curtis. Because, because a day without Dr. Nefarious is a day without sunshine. <laughs> you can definitely hear the brainwashing at hand. Oh, yeah. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, she's gonna be the uh, the crystal ball head. Oh, that's fun. I was yeah. planting some vines when suddenly I felt the urge to stop and Wait, help what? our visitor build his new home. Wait, what? Oh my God, there's gonna be a Borderlands movie? Oh yeah, there has been for years. There's been talk about. Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. Yes, she's Doctor Tannis. I didn't know that. That's the first I've heard about it. Crazy. Whoa, 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 whoa. I gotta double check that. Oh my god, you know who's gonna be Claptrap? Is it Jack Black? It's Jack Black! I'm not surprised. Oh, well, Kate Blanchett is Lilith. Fuck not, yeah. Not a surprise there either. Oh, please tell me Mordecai is gonna... Is... Are they not gonna have Mordecai? I think it's just um, Roland and Lilith. They're cutting the cast down a bit. Oh. They couldn't even get Brick? I don't think Brick is in it, no. Oh. Well. I think it's more of a, like, a they don't really do anything for the story kind of deal. That's fair. They're hardly the most fair. interesting ones in the story anyway. Like, Lilith and Roland both have, like, reasons to be involved. That's fair, but I like... Uh, I, I mained Mordecai because of the bird. That's fair. I mained Brick in the first game. And then I mained That's Lilith fair. when I played it again later because I'm not stupid enough to play as Brick again. Oh, yeah, no, that sounds like a miserable time. I Does mean, he have any special powers... He punches good. Yeah, that's not useful. Well, the problem is that if you build him wrong, which is very easy to do, he's 
pretty much just a tank and nothing else. If you play him well and you know what you're doing, um, he can be just as decent as any other characters can uh, on their bad days. So take that as you will. Take that for the uh, death by faint praise that I meant it to be. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, it's not really his fault. It's more that the game is not built around melee. And yeah. he exclusively relies on, like, melee for, like, most of his, um, his stuff to work. Yeah, that's why I played Mordecai, because, you know, I like snipers. That's fair. I don't need to worry about melee if they can't even get close to me. And if they do start getting close to me, well, there's a bird that'll shoot acid at them. To be fair, Lilith is, like, really broken in that game. She can just soak on so much uh, extra damage. Yeah. I like Mordecai. Yeah, he, he's a lot of fun. He is. I would love to play Borderlands, but we need to, like, record, like, eight-hour sessions. Fair enough. And then we'd probably have to, like, cut it down. Yeah, and that's, like, work. Like, we've tried multiple times to play Borderlands. We've tried four times to play Borderlands. We just can't vibe with it in regards to, uh, you know. Uh, uh, Level three you know, negotiator. Kennels. Yeah, everything levels up pretty fast once you, like, start getting into the meat and potatoes of the game. I would kill for some potatoes right now. You know what I want? I you know want what I made today for dinner? And mac and cheese. I made couscous with dinner today. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Behold, I have oil. I wonder what Hell this yeah. means. What can I do with oil? Probably flammable. No, I can make tea rust stuff really quick. Ta-da, it's been greased. But it's not flammable? No, you can't use it as a flammable item. It's used for puzzle solving, not for combat. Thanks for all your help, stranger. Well, now that our friends are free, we can shut down the outpost and restore the village. See you later, stranger. I'll come back anytime. Yay, victory! The people are saved! We did it, Patrick! We saved Bikini Bottom! God, I love that entire episode. Yeah. You know and then I go into the past and I see just how brainwashed they were. It's crazy how, like, most of the technology in this universe requires really big wrenches. Yeah. I'm super excited, are you? We get to meet Dr. Nefarious in person. I've heard he's Hell a great yeah. guy. He sounds amazing. Yeah, all these fungoid people we've met praise him and talk about how like a day without him is a day without sunshine. Finally. What was that one? It's the uh, it's the sniper gun. Oh, hell yeah! It's snipers are my favorite weapon. It's not my game. favorite, uh, mostly because like you can't really like pot shot from a distance. Because all the enemies have, like, kind of infinite range and aren't stupid. 
If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I will say this, the game's ammo issues, I never really noticed them until, like, somebody brought them up, and then I'm like, yeah, wait a minute, I am swapping weapons a lot. <laughs> there should be a quick swap. Like the uh, there is, people. but I want to make, I want to swap to specific weapons, uh -huh. not just back to the weapon that I was using earlier. See, this, this brings me back to the Tesla spikes, but, like... I don't have nearly as much ammo on them as I want, so why switch back to them? Yeah. Too bad you can't, like, set the D-pad to hotkeys, uh, like, four of them. Well, the D-pad is being used for my rocket boots, my swing shot, uh, and the Omni Soaker. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought those would be, like, in the menu. Nah, it was kind of, uh, it was way easier to put them on, like, the D-pad. Let me yeah. tell you, in the in the previous games, they used to be in the menu, and it was the most obnoxious thing. Oh. Oh, you're in the past, right? How yep. I get into the chamber? You are making a mistake. The clock is not a time machine. Oh, fuck, you're killing him. Will enter my chamber, and he is safe far from you. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no. Oh. Annihilate him, you fools! Now he looks more evil. I love this next bit. <laughs> Did he always have that scar in the future? Not so smart now, are you? Oh, no, he didn't. Get it? Because he's a moron! Oh, ho, ho, ho. Dr. Nefarious. You have such a wonderful sense of humor. And you're so... So... <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It happens in real time. It's like a looper. It's looper time travel. Well, this came first. It's Looper Time Travel. I've never actually seen Looper. Wait. <laughs> Shit, I might be getting confused. Is Looper the time travel one, or is it the teleporting one? Uh, you're thinking a jumper is the teleporting one. Which Looper is the uh, time travel one. By Ryan okay. Johnson. Yeah. Uh, Looper's a pretty good movie, except for the ending is kind of meh. But it's time travel mechanics are interesting. Fair enough. Did you ever see the movie Predestination? No. Uh, the premise is that it follows a uh, agent who who uh, is injured in a on a mission and essentially has to retire as a result. They get a whole new face and everything. They're told, go find a new life for yourself. Uh, before he did, does, he has to go back in time and recruit himself into the agency. Turns out, he used to be a girl. 
she hmm. where she basically talks about like how how her life went to the agent and it, it's really clever and what ends up happening is it's a predestination paradox the entire movie is a predestination paradox it's a it's a time loop yes she is her own father and mother interesting the reveal is that she's like oh i ran into this boy and he was really nice to me but then he dumped me after one night and i got pregnant and i brought the baby to a church the same church i grew up in and yada 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 turns out the boy is her and he goes back in time to get revenge on the boy who dumped her after one night and beca ends up becoming said boy if that makes sense i think so it makes more sense when you see it in action you know yeah. the buzz you blades know what, uh... You know what one of uh my favorite, my favorite gun this is my favorite favorite is... gun Is there a shredder Oh it's ninja stars Mhm mm Have you seen butterfly effect Ah uh, Gosh, I know of it. I saw like I saw it once when I was very younger, and couldn't appreciate the uh, the stuff that happens. Oh my God! Right, Disneyland use... is uh, trying to advertise or er, trying to recruit people extras for the Haunted Mansion movie uh, at the Haunted Mansion ride. I need Disneyland. to buy more ammo. Give me a second. Look at this loser probably thinking he was going to get one over on me as soon as the cutscene was over. Oh no, it's even worse than I thought. Oh no. Listen to this sign outside the Haunted Mansion ride. <clears throat> Notice of filming today. Walt Disney Studios motion picture will be filming at this location today. By entering this location, you irrevocably consent to and authorize Walt Disney Studio motion pictures and its affiliate successors and assigns uh, collectively producer uh, to photograph you, make audio and video recordings of you, and use such photographs and recordings throughout the world for any purpose whatsoever in perpetuity and in any media including but not limited to online social media streaming platforms television broadcasts and home entertainment products all such photographs and recordings will be the sole property of the producers they're turning the goddamn haunted mansion ride into uh uh, uh into a uh, scab that they're turning anyone who goes on the haunted Min mansion ride into a scab without Oof. their consent. Well, they are consenting because they are going on the ride. It is very shitty that they're doing so, of course, because not well, everybody I mean... realizes what's going on legally because nobody's explained to them what's going on. Yeah, and also a sign like that does not count as consent like you need to actually sign shit in order to for that stuff to apply but the thing is it's disney they have an army of lawyers so you won't be able to sue them for their blatantly illegal or their blatantly uh invalid claim not to even your like contract well it's not even a contract like Oh, I can't break this one. You know why I can't break this one? Because it's story important. Yes. You catch on real quick. I like that. Of course I know that if you can't break something, that means it's important. 
on a my side, guess on a side note. On, my, hold on, I want to say what my guess is. Okay. I think that at some point after you get, uh, uh, I, I think at some point you're going to uh, have to make a quick escape, and he's gonna go to the computer to call his ship. I mean, what do I say to that? I mean, it's the obvious uh, way to go about it. I mean, yeah, that's also Dragon Ball Z. but that's a whole different thing. Level four. Thank God, I'm so close to level up. Let's see, what do I need? I need whatever is over there. Check me out, I'm smart. Nobody is smarter at video games. I figured out the puzzle. Aren't I clever? Fuck, 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 fuck. I mean, I was very clever up until that moment. Uh. Come on, you can't even laugh at my misery. I mean... I set myself up for that. I didn't even intend for that to happen. Well, I mean, it's too obvious to laugh at. I mean, you can still laugh at obvious things. If we only ever laughed at the things we never expected, then we would never be laughing. Is really we're always expecting something. My mind is empty. My mind is like a DVD screen say or, or the DVD uh The DVD yeah, the, thing the... that goes back and forth, hop hop hop. Yeah, yeah. Is it a screensaver? Kinda, yeah. Right. I mean, it's saving the screen, so it might as well be. Yeah. God. You ever think about how, like... The screensavers were needed for, uh... Uh... Cathed Ray monitors. Uh, you know, the big box monitors. Yep. Uh, yeah, LCD doesn't burn uh, images like uh, CRT monitors did. Yep, but we still so, have screensavers. Why is that? I think they were... I, I think that they're basically grandfathered in, like how the save icon is a floppy disk. Well, think about it this way. Not only is it grandfathered in... Humans are sentimental. I'm pretty sure they were discussing it, and somebody grabbed another man by the neck and said, if you remove this screensaver, it's not going to mean anything. You know what my favorite screensaver was? Pipes? Close, but no, the labyrinth. Mm. Well, that was my second guess. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Give me a second. Dun, 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 God, I, the fact that that's just like burned into my head is like just default music when I need something. It's like. What comes diner? Yeah. It's a good song. Oh, absolutely. That's why uh, it was sampled for. 500 uh, different songs. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. If you check out some of the most sampled songs in history, Tom's Diner is up there. Yeah. I don't doubt it.
You better be ready. We're fighting this guy a third time. Oh boy. Just like Klungo. So, I was thinking about re uh, replaying the Banjo series. Fair enough. Because, uh... Well, uh, our Banjo series on the channel was... Very old quality. and, like, three hours long each. Yeah, and also, it, um... I... I made it way too small. I did not know what the fuck I was doing at the time. Mmm... It's impossible to see. Well, I only used like a third of the screen. Oh, lord. Yeah. The world's greatest assassin, people. He says surprise when he jumps you. Surprise! Yeah, do you think it'd be a good idea? It could be. It might be fun. I'd, I'd actually be up for playing it. Uh, but I would probably also want it to be released on uh, modern PC first. Well... Microsoft has the means. Benja kazooie Remaster, when? I mean, I have it on original hardware. But I don't. Yeah, but also, <laughs> I mean, that, that's no fair. offense to you, but you aren't the one who's played it a dozen times. Are you You'd implying probably... that I couldn't be any good at it? Yes. I mean, that hurts. Am I wrong? I mean, I wouldn't know. I never played it before. Exactly. But what if I was, like, really good at Banjo-Kazooie? You would feel really bad about it. Well, I mean... You could always, uh... You can always play it on the Switch. Oh, yeah, it's on the Switch now. Yeah. God... missions are kind of my thing. Now, how do I lower the containment shield? <sighs> These cables must lead to some sort of power supply. Follow them and destroy the containment generators. I will say this. I do love that I have free con full control over the, uh, the bridge. Always a fun little addition, you know? Yeah. And hey, it even has some of the damage that I did earlier. Isn't that so thoughtful? Yeah. You thought I need you could to buy get a me Nintendo with that. Oh, I need to buy a Nintendo 64 controller for uh for the Switch. Hmm. They sell those? Uh, no, they were a limited time, and scalpers took them all, so they're expensive. As fuck. I'm not surprised. But they do exist. It'd Nintendo be... stuff gets scalped so much. You, you think they'd have yeah. realized now what's going on, but apparently they don't care. Uh. Ratchet, forget about me. Go. Get to the clock. Save the lumbaxes. Get to the clock. Save the lumbaxes. Or don't. I mean, I'm rescuing him first. I 
I bungled that jump. I was like, ah, I can redirect a little in air. Nope, bad idea. Don't do that. I swear I beat in this game on hardcore. <laughs> I am sure you have. I mean, you would be rusty if you hadn't played something in like a good month and a half. Oh yeah? I kid, it's been yeah. longer than that. Didn't we play this last week? Did we? I think so. Or are you merely convincing yourself we did? I don't know, you expect me to remember things? No, Miss Silver, I expect you to die! Are you gonna be disappointed? I am immortal. What? Lame. Why is everybody immortal nowadays? Eh. Uh, because reasons. Oh. What's this? What do I do it's here? Water. Probably the, the, these the plates water. are too hot to stand on. Yeah. Free ride, free ride, free ride, and a hot plate. <laughs> Is that a Simpsons gag? Yep. Uh, Lisa was uh, given a complete free ride uh, college uh, tuition, and all she had to do was let someone else take credit for something she did. Oh, that's just cruel. Yeah. But, uh, eventually her pride won out, and, uh, she did not accept the free ride. I mean, I wouldn't have accepted it either. Yeah, no. I told you to leave me. You shouldn't have come back. Wow. That was not the reaction I was expecting. You know, General, it's not like I've been here just sitting around all day. I've traveled back in time, found out what happened to Orvis. Back in time? When? How far? Not far enough. It's just that we're the only ones who can fix the past. I'm proud of you, Ratchet. You can see where his priorities lie. Yeah, I mean, I understand. He wants to say, he, he wants to undo his mistake. You know, that was his mistake. <laughs> The yeah, writing is a... so good for General Azimuth. It's it's insane. Yeah. Um, Super Geek Mike recently put out a video. Uh, by the way, it's a fantastic YouTube channel. Uh, Super Geek Mike put out a fantastic video on uh, the different types of villains and how it's a spectrum from the sympathetic to the monstrous. You know the. The sympathetic being the ones you can understand. You don't have to agree with them, but you can understand why they do what they do. Ah, uh, yes. The sliding scale of uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears to uh, Jack Horner. <laughs> yeah, although his example was... Um... Are you ready? Oh, fuck. Not Jack Horner? No, no. Uh, it was joker for the monstrous like he just does it because he can and for sympathetic it was uh oh, fuck. who was it i don't remember i'd have to rewatch the video was it was it still a uh a comic book character uh oh, dan i missed no, that no no Don't worry, the most sympathetic character in all of uh, cinema is the uh, serial killer from Seven. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, <laughs> Seven is such a good movie, though. It is. Ah, Magneto. It was a comic book character. My mistake. I kind of felt it was going to be a comic book character. Yeah, no, it was Magneto. Because um, 
you can understand where Magneto is coming from. He survived the Holocaust, so, you know, seeing a uh, politician pass laws making mutants illegal, that's pretty much preparing a second Holocaust. And yep, he's, he's ready for that. Now, so. yeah, he's been through it, and he was helpless during the first one, but he can actually do something to stop it this time. And I understand, and honestly... The more shit happens, the more I agree with Magneto. He... The, the thing he about, like, voice. Stan Lee, especially his writing, and, like, the, his way, method of making characters is to find a current topic and then be fairly nuanced about it. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Luke Cage, uh, the first representation of Luke Cage is of a man wrongly convicted for a crime. And he's black. <laughs> yeah. Take that as you will as a sign of just how ahead of the times uh, Stan Lee was in writing the first major black character to run his own comic series. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, Stanley was always, um, was always a great ahead of the uh, curve writer. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say ahead of the curve. I mean, he, the curve was still there. He was just putting it in the forefront. If that makes sense. Like, these were, these issues didn't suddenly begin out of nowhere. They were still issues back then. It's just, uh... He was highlighting not, them, and a lot of people yeah, he, weren't. A lot of people were turning their heads away. And he was forcing them to look at it. You know? There was a, um... I went to university, and one of the classes I was in... Uh, there was a a bit where we had to analyze media and one of the and like as we were analyzing the media in question I was just like this is an allegory for any sort of minority and, and like how actually meeting uh, people from different cultures is the way you begin to understand them you yeah. don't understand them through just reading about caricatures and whatnot. And yeah, then no, this girl steps up and thing. goes, What do you mean? They weren't racist back in the 70s. And it was illegal for... Oh, wait, no. It, it was... Interracial marriage was legalized in 1969. 1966? Either way, they were still extremely racist in the 70s. Like, people were protesting against... Uh, people were trying to overturn interracial marriage in the 70s. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I... Pretty much blew up at her. I'm like, no, they were. They absolutely were. How could you not notice that? To be fair... It's very easy not to notice things when you're not alive at that point in time. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody likes to imagine that uh, history is a lot more squeaky clean than it is. Well, American history. Other countries, uh, like Germany, uh, acknowledge their uh, the worst parts of their history and make sure that people know what happened so that it doesn't happen again. I grew up in the South. Let me tell you what that meant. I live in, I grew up in Texas. I grew up in <laughs> Georgia. Ooh, that's rough. I want you to imagine uh, how classes went whenever uh, the topic of the Civil War came up. I would assume that it's uh, similar to the topic of the... Uh, the... Mexican-American war uh, is taught here in Texas.
Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, let me guess. They uh, said that it wasn't about slavery until later or some shit? It was never about slavery. It was states' rights. <laughs> states' rights to do what? <laughs> Fair enough. Exactly. It was always about the slavery. So I don't have all the Constructo weapons yet. I have the Constructo gun and I have the Constructo uh, bomb, but I don't have the Constructo third weapon. Hmm. That I can only get through the um, through the arena. Do you want to go back to the arena, or do you want to do our clink stage and then call it a quit? Oh, uh, let's do the clink stage and call it a quit. So we can open the next episode with the arena. Fair enough. That way it has a nice parallel with this episode where we opened with the arena. Alright. Let's just head back to our ship. Woo! This game has good sound design. <laughs> oh, very good sound design. This game is, like, just great design overall. It really goes to show just how uh, good the teams in Zomniac are. Yeah, once they uh, are no longer being forced to crunch 24-7. Oh, this was made during that crunch. This is a result of crunch. Oh. Yeah, this is probably the game where, like, uh, all that crunch uh, finally collapsed in on itself. Ugh. Which but is probably saying now. just how good uh, Insomniac is, that their crunch deadline mess of a game so, is crack in time. Yeah, a lot better than CD Projekt Red's crunch disaster. Yeah, no. Cyberpunk. Yeah. Well, this was made in a much shorter time period than Cyberpunk, but uh, it's also far less that's ambitious. That's even sadder. Well, it's far less ambitious, and it yeah. wasn't pushing, like, unrealistic expectations and what one can put into a game. That's fair. I am sad to say that one of my favorite games was also made during Crunch, and some of the idea or some of the uh, some of the things that happened in the game uh, are a direct result of the Crunch, and that is Majora's Mask. Uh, you know how in Majora's Mask in, uh, in the beginning of Majora's Mask um, Link when Link turns into a Deku Scrub, there's the whole thing of him being chased by the giant Deku Scrub. Yes. Uh, that is actually, that was actually because uh, the uh, uh, lead designer had a nightmare where he was being chased by Deku Scrubs and decided to put it in the game. Oof. Yeah. The game is extremely depressing because of the crunch. I'm trying to think uh, of, like, other games that have been affected by crunch that I still like. Um... Oh, Dark Souls? Fuck. Uh, D Dark Souls wasn't really crunched, as far as I know. Well, Isolith. Uh, that's just bad time management. But, fair enough. Okay, okay that's fair. Though I'm pretty sure the people working on it are like, no, it really was down to the wire. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it, it kind of was. But at the same time, it's not like... If it wasn't down to the wire, Lost Isolith would have been... At, at, at the very least, you could look at Lost Isolith. Fair enough. Um, That's half the reason why I'm going to be doing the Fair Lady's Covenant is because... You I don't want it? to... Yeah, I don't want to have to look at it. It's a lot of um, oranges. It is ugly. Are we going to be fighting the centipede? Uh, yeah, we're doing all bosses. Okay. We're going to be fighting the centipede, and then we're going to unlock the next bonfire because Solaire's going to be there. But we are going to unlock the shortcut beforehand and get the sunlit maggot. Oh, boy. I forgot about these puzzles. 
Oh, the time travel puzzles? Oh, they added another color. Yep, I got four of them. Interesting. All right, I'm probably gonna have to go back and change some of that. Got it. I think you got it. Nah, I'm gonna have to go back and change some of my pattern. Just an unfortunate truth. Oh, probably the gold one. Yeah, I, I think it just... Oh, wait, hold on. Not the gold. Yes, the gold one. I'm absolutely gonna have to change. I think the um, the blue one. No, I I, I think it's the gold one. And that's the blue one. What I'm gonna want to do is I'm gonna want to open this, open this, let him in, and then immediately. I it was not fast enough. Okay, I'm gonna have to change. It's the golden one, because after you press the thing and he hops on the pad, you're going to want to jump up to the next pad over. No, that's too far a gap. I can't make it. A recorded entity has failed. And I'm going to want to jump to this one. And then just to be safe, there. A recorded entity. Boom. Okay, I'm going to have to make some changes. Temple recording initiated. A recorded entity has failed. I'm going to go down. I'm gonna bring him up, A recorded and he completely fails. Beautiful. One of these is, is gonna have to be me, and I'm gonna to have to figure out which one that is. The red. The red's not doing anything right now. Well, I gotta go back, and I gotta change the gold. Temple recording. Yeah. But I think the red one is going to be the one that needs to be used, since it's the one that's not making it in time. A recorded entity has failed. Yeah. There we go. Entity has failed. And that was the red one. Yeah, red is the one you're going to want to be. Yep. Ta-da! Well, almost. Ta-da! Fair oh, enough. Hell yeah! Fuck yeah, that's so satisfying. That is a dopamine rush. Yep, always, always a rush to get a reward out of it. I could skip them, but it's, like, not as fun. Yeah, no, being showered in loot is great. Everybody can testify to being showered in stuff is wonderful. Yep. Except if it was money. That would probably be painful. I don't know. You look like you're... Uh, uh, Clank seems to enjoy being showered in nut. You're hilarious. 
Hey, it could be worse. I was really going to go with a golden shower. Dang it. There's an achieve. There's a, a title for if... Not a title. Uh, a trophy. Trophy. For if you manage to kill two enemies at once by deflecting their projectiles back at them. Ah, uh, rip. Oh, this one's damaged. Time to fix it. I wonder what could be in this station. I'm gonna guess Charles Martinet. Hello. I like his beard. Ticker a start. What are you doing all the way out here? These are my memory banks. Your memory banks? Oh, I must have taken a wrong turn somewhere. I thought I was in that green village head. What with all the emptiness. Oh, well, no matter. <laughs> Aha! Here's the culprit. Now, what could this thingamajig be doing fluttering your brain? That is Ratchet's Omni Wrench. Ratchet. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Furry little fella. Don't think I've ever seen you without him. Oh, you're new to it on the outs, are you? No, we are still friends, but I have new responsibilities. Moving on, huh? Well, we're all trying to find our own path in the universe. The hard part is taking those first steps. Come on, I'll give you a boost. Go ahead. If he's That's a warp plan, pipe. You'll understand. Are you coming? Plumbers don't just go diving down strange pipes all willy-nilly. That'd be ridiculous. <laughs> oh, this one you have to do a any more than six minutes oh look at that man I even had the warp pipe noise I mean they have Mario I thought I saw some strange neural activity there for a second the station is operation so that's the plumber the plumber is a character who appeared in the first ratchet and Clank game and has appeared in every single major title since is he basically a god the implication is yes I, I, I kind of figure, considering he was in a non-physical space. He even gets a mention in um in one of the new in the newest game. He doesn't show up, but he gets mentioned. I'm always a fan of deities taking the form of like the most innocuous thing. You know, like in a uh, like like in a Christmas movie where it turns out that the homeless person who gives uh, like, uh, wise advice. At the end, it turns out he was Santa all along. You know, that old trope? Yes. Uh, another good example of that is, um... There we go! You got the trophy? The skill point. It wasn't a trophy. <laughs> uh. Um, a really good one is, uh, Zeus in God of War. Oh yeah, he was the uh, grave digger. Yep. Yeah. That's another... actually really clever. That's a good one. That was a good one. Uh, another really good one is in uh, Greek mythology. If you remember, there was that time Zeus and I believe Hermes disguised themselves as like old uh, old uh, beggars and went into a, a town just to see like. Yeah, no. Uh, what they're like, and the people treated them like shit, and they made their way up to the top of a hill where there was this like uh, rundown cottage kind of place mm -hmm. filled with these two uh, with these two men, and like they didn't have a lot of food, but they were willing to share it with uh, uh, these absolute strangers that just came to their house. And you know, be as hospitable as they uh, hospitable as they could without. Oh, I fucked that uh, up entirely. With what little they had, and uh, for their kindness, uh, Zeus uh, and Hermes uh, revealed themselves to be gods, and were like, you know, you're the only people in the in the city that didn't treat us like shit, so uh, you're gonna be spared. And then, like, a massive earthquake destroyed the town, and. The, the cottage was the only one left. 
Yep, you know that story, right? They have something like that in Star Trek. There's an episode in Star Trek in which uh, the Star Trek crew, find, Enterprise crew, find a... Um, what, what's the word? Uh, they find a cottage on a planet with no more life forms. Oh my. And they're like, what happened here? And they do figure it out. Uh, what ended up happening is the couple that lives there uh, are the sole survivors of a... Basically, an alien species comes around and they blow up this... In... And they basically kill everybody on this planet. It turns out, though, that the old man is a galactic super-level being... And they just pissed off what was essentially a godlike deity. Oof. His revenge was to wipe them from existence. Temporal recording initiated. Not just like the memory of them or like any of that. He wipes them entirely out of time and space. They don't exist. Was it Q that did it? No, it's some other figure. Uh. Q gets a mention, but he's not not the guy who who did it. So you are not the guy. You're not capable of being the guy. I had a guy, but now I don't. You are not the guy. Sorry. Oh, that, that's uh, it, that's a good song. I get it. Anyway, yeah, anyway no, the episode really ends with the uh, Star Trek crew basically going. Wait a minute. I recorded and. <laughs> This this guy just really wants to live his life alone. We should just respect his wishes and leave him and his wife to be. I mean, valid. <laughs> anyway, uh, they do. And it's probably the smartest thing they did that entire episode. <laughs> Temporal recording initiated. Uh, anyway, the wife is also dead. She got killed when the uh, the aliens wiped out her planet. That's um, rough. And part of it is that he is so grief stricken by it that um, he that that's why he wipes everybody out. There we go. I will say, I, I like these temporal challenges because they require a lot of uh, back and forth. Yeah, and a lot of non-linear thinking. Oh god, that could have been terrible. Yeah. I was, I was wondering why the hell you weren't getting on the button. You'd be shocked how easily distracted I am when I think that I have a problem solved. Yeah, you you forget to actually do the thing. Yeah. There we go. And it's now the you... green one I want to, um... You want to be? Yeah. Can you imagine if they had, like, seven of them? Like a full rainbow? Fuck. Oh, thank good. I was just a bit too slow on the uptake. I was like trying to match my old timing, and then I'm like, wait a minute. I do like time puzzles. He waited for me. How convenient. <laughs> um, you remember when we, in It Takes Two when we were stuck on that one time puzzle? Because, uh, because I kept forgetting, like, so what it was, was I had to, like, set 
my point. I, I or some I basically had to teleport behind a moving wall. And we we kept getting stuck on it. Because you because you kept uh, not giving yourself enough time. No, because I kept forgetting. I, I, I believe it was something like because you have the time power, you could reverse the, and, and you could make things go forward and back in time. While I had teleporting, I could uh, set myself like I could make a version of. Or yes, I believe the gag was that while Cody never had enough time, uh, the wife was never in enough places. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Did I? Was it like I could clone myself or something? I don't remember. I believe you could clone yourself to some degree. That was the trick. And then teleport myself to the clone. Yeah. Either way, the what we had to do was I had to basically set my teleport to a spot and then let you uh, fast forward the moving wall uh, to pass that spot. So when I teleported, I would be behind the wall. And we spent like half an hour on that puzzle. <laughs> The Orvis Chamber. The Orvis Chamber. This I is wonder what who's it's been all there. been leading up to. This door is the keep, keep watching. Keep, keep watching. I am watching. XJ zero four six one. On behalf of Orvis and in accordance with his wishes, I present to you the Orvis Chamber. Uh, Who's that? Who's that? I get it. I love this game. It's so clever. <laughs> it's like, oh God, for a game they were apparently crunching with and like had so many deadline issues. At the same time, it has so many little touches that are just like, oh, I love that. I'm gonna be pissed if our robot friend ended up being evil. He loved you very much, you know. He was always XJ0461 this and XJ0461 that. I'm supposed to play this for you. It's sort of an orientation message. Hello, XJ0461. Or should I say, Clank? Here, in this very chamber, I watched over time. And now that you understand the power of the clock, I must ask that you protect it at all costs, for even the slightest misuse of its power can rip the very fabric of existence. Ooh. The clock, much like Good thing nobody's misused time travel yet. And not to be tampered with. But like any father, my only wish is that my... I'm sorry. Were you in the middle of something? Intruders! Protect the chamber! Oh, you dick. Jarvis! What an asshole. The butler did it. You know, I like that you can tell he can't actually play because he has no fingers. Yeah. You know, in whatever book originally was the first one to have the butler do it, that must have blown people's minds. Lawrence is one of my favorite characters. I didn't send for a massage. Go away. Would you cut me a break, pal? I mean, would you just open the door? This is another of my favorite characters. They keep introducing fan favorite characters. Oh, it's a nurse. Hello. Yeah, nurse. it's a nurse. And she's so great. She's like a top ten character, and they introduce her in the last half of the game. It's it's incredible just how like great the writers are that they can endear a character to you so quickly. Oh, uh, I'm guessing she shows up in earlier games and does stuff. No, well, this is her only game appearance, but she's one of the fan favorite characters in the entire series. <laughs> I don't believe it. You know, I wouldn't put it past them to make it turn out that she's not actually really? Captain Quirk, she's actually a real nurse that just happens to look like him. I she looks like Captain Quirk? Yeah. 
All right. Nice. Uh, we call it? Um, there's a space boss fight, but we are an hour 59 minutes in. Yeah, we're calling it. Awesome. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get on with the outro then. All right. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. There's plenty of stuff you can see on the channel. As I mentioned before, I am playing Dark Souls, and we are in Anerlando by the time this goes up on YouTube. Um, go place your bets on how many times it takes me to get past the archers. Uh, also My on the bet channel, is two, just to throw everybody through a loop. You are very generous. I am very generous. Uh, I'm a generous you, god. You're optimistic. Uh, anywho, challenge uh, there is question also... of the day. Well, I mean, there's other stuff we can talk about. Oh, there's uh, stuff on the uh, channel other... first. Fine. Yeah, th there's Mario Galaxy, which I'm also playing. Uh, the and second game time. to have spherical planets. Yeah. Uh, there's also um, Tabletop Thursdays, in which means friends play Tabletop Simulator every Thursday. And a couple of RPG campaigns, uh, one of which is a homebrew D&D 5e campaign I run called World of Tapir. And the other, uh, we recently finished Curse of Strahd and are moving on to a homebrew uh, system wasteland apocalypse. Uh, All right. Which is a mouthful to say. So you got a comment challenge for us? Yes. If you were God, what tacky low class job would you give yourself? Oh man. I would work at a hot topic. If I was God, I'd be a taxi driver. You know what? Fair. I guess it depends on the type of God. Fair enough. If you're a trickster god, you'd probably want a different job than, say, a, uh, a god of travel or a god of information. Yeah, no, I, I'd be, I, I would work, like, at a hot topic, and uh, I'd be a trickster god who works at a hot topic and uh, basically uh, sows the seeds of chaos. Uh, because, you yeah, know, goths and punks are really good at uh, upsetting the status quo. Will you be handing out Gur merchandise? Of course I would. Will you be handing out Invader Zim themed socks and saying you can wear Invader Zim themed socks with your punk spikes? Of course I would. I would introduce them to the concept of scene. I have a... Um... I went to a Hot Topic once, mostly because it was like a group thing, and I was like, I just, I'd never been to Hot Topic before. Anyway, I ended up getting a shirt with all the Pokemon on it, but the problem I realized was that I, I picked up a, uh, my size in like girls' clothes, and I'm like, oh, well, that explains the low-cut chest. Oh, <laughs> uh, I bet you could work it. I can definitely work it. Oh, yeah. Anyway, with that out of the way, there's nothing to say about good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Every Lombax, every robot.